Thanks, Christina. Christina, let us know at, with the timeline. All right. We have 12 participants so far. Add them to the class. Let's give it another minute or two. Get a few more people logged on. Okay. Hello, Paula. All right, six oh, yeah. three. Good. Welcome to Why Be Certified, presented to you today by the City of Charleston and LDC. We're excited to have you here on today. We're asking you to please use our chat box today to put your name, your business uh, name, as well as the what you are excited about learning on today. Good afternoon. My name is Ruth Jordan. And I have with me Charlie O'Brien. Charlie, well, introduce yourself. Hola, soy Charlie O'Brien del LDC, donde trabajo con mis con los clientes que donde hacemos muchas um, préstamos. Uh, bienvenidos a webinar donde vamos a discutir las razones para certificar sus empresas latinas con la ciudad de Charleston. All right, thank you, Charlie. And so today we're gonna to go ahead with a couple of housekeeping uh, on today. And that with our housekeeping, the slide presentations are being recorded and it will be made available to you. And so again, we're asking participants to please leave your audio off. However, you're gonna have your audio is off and you will have an opportunity to put your questions in our Q and A box and participants viewing, viewing via YouTube live streaming, you will also be able to ask questions as well. And so as we continue today, we're going to turn it now over to Christina and Christina Ott, who is our project assistant for the city of Charleston. And she's going to navigate from here on out. Christina. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm happy to introduce Miss Ruth Jordan. She is the Minority Business Enterprise Manager for the City of Charleston. Her primary roles include implementing the City of Charleston's MWBE certification program for women and minority-owned businesses, providing business development and training programs, and connecting businesses to the city's procurement and contracting opportunities, access to capital, and other business resource partners. Ruth has held numerous executive positions during her career including interim CEO of Federal Healthcare Network. She was the former federal procurement officer at the Naval Weapons Station in Charleston. She's a senior MWBE consultant with Williams and Associates, the director of SC Voter Empowerment, licensed realtor and chair of Charleston County Schools. That's Ms. Ruth Jordan. And assisting her today and helping with some of our Spanish translations, we have Charlie O'Brien. 
He has been involved in small businesses in different capacities for over 25 years before joining the Charleston LDC. As the Director of Client Experience and Success, he supports LDC clients on their business journey by offering coaching and advisory services while also ensuring that the LDC offers their clients the best experience possible through the life of their relationship. As a native of Caracas, Venezuela, Charlie has a passion for outreach to underserved communities and makes it his mission to strive for maximum diversity in the LDC's lending portfolio. Charlie has his Master of Business Administration from Ryder University, New Jersey, and is a member of the City of Charleston's Latinx Advisory Council and a board member of the Hispanic Business Association. So welcome our wonderful panelists. Thank you guys so much for uh, kicking us off. And I think we're gonna have Charlie start us with a poll. I'm going to share. Cuantos años tienen en, en, las, en la empresa? How many years have you been in business? And so we want you all to participate in this webinar by answering some quick poll questions, because we really want to know who are we talking to? And so we're going to give you a few seconds to answer how long you've been in business. Put your answers in. I'm ready okay. to share. Ooh, good. So look like we have at least 50% of those who are on our call has been in business for more than 10 years. That's exciting. We have 20% five to 10 years, 10% two to five years, and 20% less than two years, which is great to know that we have such large experience uh, on this call. So that means that we're gonna have lots of great questions that we'll be able to share on today. Let's get into the meat of why be certified. We have another poll question, okay. So <laughs> let me give you some history. The city of Charleston back in 1980 passed an ordinance which established my office of women minority owned business. Under section 2-268, the ordinance, the ordinance declared that the city shall create an office of women minority owned business, particularly designed to help level the playing field of women and minority owned businesses. It reads that, that the city must ensure that there is a real and equitable opportunity for all participants to be able to participate in the city's procurement division. MWDBEs were carved out to ensure that they too were given an opportunity to participate in city procurement opportunities. And so why be certified? As a result of this being established since 1980, this office was in the business of certifying women and minority owned businesses. Certification gives you a leg up where you would not might have an opportunity to compete with bigger businesses or players. A certification can help your business gain access to government contracts. You can drastically benefit from set aside contracts. And I'm gonna talk about set asides as we move forward. Why be certified? These benefits. Also certified businesses are added publicly to our uh, database where people all over the city as well as outside the region look at our list when they're looking for certified businesses and those businesses and certifications, they go directly to our list. Also our MWBE program can provide free access to conferences, networking opportunities, uh, free workshops, training, and most importantly, get you certified. Business to business. Our certification works better with businesses who are looking to do business with other businesses. Many larger companies have supplier diversity programs to promote opportunities for diverse suppliers, such as Charleston County, the school district, Boeing, 
Uh, the chamber also promotes uh, supply diversity. This helps diversify and strengthens the supply chains, but those companies promote innovation and drive business expansion, and more importantly, economic impact. Diversity and certification helps job creation, increase wages, and tax revenues that support our local economies and our, community, and our communities. So certification helps Main Street. I oftentimes tell people it is small business that drives and the Main Street and making sure that our citizens and our businesses are successful. And today we are going to go step by step with the city of Charleston's MWBE certification process. Oftentimes people feel like it's overwhelming, but I, I'm here today to share with you that the process is not difficult. Our application process is simple. When they established it almost uh, 30 years ago, it was to try to make the process accessible and simple as possible. And so we want everyone to feel free to ask questions. If there are things that you don't understand, we are here to help you go through the process of certification. Because once you get certified, it will scale your business. You will be able to, to compete, not just with the city of Charleston, but with the county and with the state. Who can apply and how? Number one, our office is called the Office of Women and Minority Owned Businesses. The MWBE means Minority Women Owned. You must meet the criteria as established by the federal government. It is um, the classes that have been historically disenfranchised or disadvantaged groups such as African Americans, Hispanic, Asian Americans, Alaskan Native, uh, American Indians, and white females all will fit this category of a minority owned business. Your business must be for a for profit business, it cannot be a non profit business. And if you are a white female owned business, you must own 51% of the business. And you must demonstrate real and substantial control of the daily operation of the business. What does that mean? What that means is that you must be actively involved in the business. You must hold one of the highest positions in the business, which is the owner to be 51% or above. And number, and one of the key things is that you must have been in business at least two years. And then you must complete the application with applicable documents. And we're gonna go through those documents, okay? Any questions before we go to the next slide? Put it in the chat box or in the Q&A. And I believe there is a poll question coming. Okay. Charlie? Yes. Son ustedes una empresa latina? Are you a Latinx owned business? Let's see. All right, the results are 64% of those who responded is currently a Latinx owned business. Great, and 36% uh, responded no. All right, Pedro, hello Pedro, all right. Now we're gonna walk through the certification process. This is our application. The application, like I said, is a two page application, front and back. 
it, you can complete this electronically or in the paper form. And again, on the top of the application, it says the city of Charleston. And then it again provides you with a list of who can apply. And that's highlighted, highlighted in yellow. And then you must determine and your ownership, whether you're a sole proprietorship, a partnership, corporation, an LLC, or others. And we're gonna go in detail along the way. And so again, we're gonna ask you about your business name and it's gonna be important that you list your business name. And so key items, okay, business type. Are you an LLC or you a corporation? You must have a federal tax ID number or your social security number or your EIN number. And then of course you have your owner's name, the business address. Although this is a city of Charleston's certification, we do do certifications for those outside of the Charleston area, whether it's Berkeley County or Dorchester County or a whole nother state, we will accept certifications of businesses outside of the Charleston area. How long have you been at that address? Your contact phone number, your business website, your business email, the date that the business started and the number of employees. And then you're going to talk about this next code in a little bit more detail. And then give a brief description of your business. And in the chat box, there is some links that are being dropped about the next codes. And we would like you to please see that what's in the chat box as we go through this. And so your federal ID number. Where can I find my employee identification number or EIN number? Your business tax returns from a previous year should have your federal ID number or your EIN number or your social security number. It can also be found in any original documents of your receipt or documents you received from IRS when you applied for your EIN your state business division website, if you are registered with a part, as a partnership, an LLC or corporation, with well, what we call the Secretary of State, they too will have your EIN number or your federal tax ID number. Other business documents or appli uh, applications containing your EIN include your bank account. If you haven't opened a business bank account, you need to do so. So when you go to the bank to open up a business bank account, they will need a separate EIN number or your social security number. Your EIN number or can also be found on your business loan application. And we're gonna talk about business loan applications in another webinar. Applications on credit cards a copy of a state or local license or a tax permit. All of these are where, places where you can find your EIN or your federal tax ID or social security numbers. And there's a question in the chat box, I mean, in the Q&A. What is that question, Christina? All right, so this is going to sound like a strange question but how is it determined if the business is owned by a minority? I attempted to certify through the federal government and they advised me that my surname was not Hispanic and therefore I could not be certified. So how do you, so again, with the city of Charleston's program, you self-certify and then on your driver's license and on your birth certificates, it tells you whether you're African-American or Asian or, or um, Alaskan. And so I'm not sure why they would tell you that your surname 
because surnames doesn't necessarily determine whether you're a minority. Yeah. And I would add that I've been Charlie O'Brien from Venezuela my whole life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, 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 don't, I don't understand that either because I've always no. been Hispanic. Exactly, exactly. Now, this NICS codes are very important. NICS stands for the North American and Industry Classification System. This is used to determine and you self-identify the type of business that you have using this NICS codes. So if you're in plumbing, the first two digits would be 33. And then if you are in construction, the first two digits would be construction. Transportation would be 48 through 49. Professional services would start with the 54, and then it would break into the additional four digits and what this does, it helps to identify the type of business that you have. So that when you are actually trying to compete for federal contracts, state contracts, they use these mix codes to determine how many people are plumbers or how many landscapers or how many architects or how many personal services and so when they're putting out scope of work, they will use these NICS codes. They'll say, you know, we're looking for persons or companies with NICS code 23, which is in construction. And sometimes they may not use the word construction. They may use the, the NICS codes. And then when we're searching and setting goals, we use NICS code to determine what should be the goal participation of having um, women minority participate. So it's important to be able to determine who is in the market. All right, next. Woo, we got another poll question. Charlie? Yes. ¿Cuántos aquí saben su código de NICS? How so many of you know, you know your, your NICS codes? Let's see how many people do. All right, let's get the answer. Ooh, wait a few more seconds. All right. There's, the votes are still coming in. <laughs> I'm betting for a low percentage. What do you think, Ruth? I'm not sure. A lot of people might know their next codes. Wow, 77% said no. So your NICS codes can be found on the internet and the link is there in the chat. Define your NICS code. So on your application, you're gonna to have to go to the website and you will be able to look it up and you will self-identify if you're in construction, what kind of construction? Is it residential? Is it commercial? If you are professional services, are you an architect, you're an engineer? And so all of those will have separate NICS codes that's, that's listed on the website. So it's gonna be really quickly. Uh, Ruth, so, so many people said they didn't know what their NICS codes was. I, I wonder if Charlie could also give a little bit of an explanation about what they are in Spanish for, for folks yes. who may understand better that way. Thank you. Sure, thank you, Meg. Um, El next code es un código que identifica el tipo de negocio que tienen o refleja su actividad comercial principal. Si cortan grama, buscan el next code donde dice lawn care o algo así. Pero puedes buscar, hay un sitio de web específico que se llama next, N-A-I-C-S. Puede buscar en Google y y encontrar el sitio de web donde puede ayudarlo a encontrar su next code. Es bastante fácil, pero es bastante importante porque ayuda a identificar su compañía cuando te preguntan estos números. Y lo que va a pasar es que cuando estos son los números que usan para seleccionar los empresarios que van a hacer los trabajos para la ciudad. Entonces ellos buscan a la gente que tiene el número 33 
para la gente que va a arreglar o, o limpiar o construir baños porque son plomeros. Así es muy importante ir al sitio de web de NAICS, lo puedes buscar en Google y encontrar cuál es su next call. And you can have multiple next codes. Say you do, let's say you do certain things, both commercial construction as well as residential construction. You can have multiple um, next codes. So on the application, it asks you for your primary, secondary next codes. And thank you, Charlie. All right, and so that's on the first page. Then we actually have that you have to self-declare whether you are African-American, American Indian, Alaskan Native, Caucasian or white, Asian, Hispanic, Latino, Native Hawaiian or Island, the Pacific Islander. And then you have to declare whether you're male or female. And if you notice what we have highlighted, that no matter what the gender is or ethnicity, you must own at least 51% of the company. Now, I know you've never heard of this before, that some business owners are putting their business uh, in their wife's, wife's name, but the woman does not work in the company. Or, so they have to have at least substantial control and be involved in the daily operation to be included into the women and minority owned certification program. And so then there are other documents that must be required. These documents are, and this is where we find out whether you really own the business or not. Must have two years of signed federal tax returns. Within those tax returns, there are K-1, K-2 or M-1 or M-2 forms or a Schedule C, which will actually indicate the percentage of ownership of that company. Whether you have joint partners with your company, it will show the shares 60%, 49.5%, 100%. That is what we use those tax returns for copies of any applicable business license. Not all businesses require you to have a business license, but you need to check with your local business license department with the city of Charleston or with North Charleston or with the state for applicable business licenses. A copy of a deed rental or lease agreement showing where your business address is. And the business address have to have a physical address. It cannot be a PO box. It must have a physical address. Now you can have a home-based business where your business address is your home business address, which is perfectly fine. There's a question in the chat box. I mean, in the Q&A box, we'll answer that as we go. Okay. Sure. So we got, um, it says that my husband and I are co-owners, 50% each of their company, and they're both Latino. Is there a way to indicate this on the application? They want to ask, um, since the application asks for a single person to complete it. So you can definitely, because both of you declare to be Latino or Latinx 
If both of you declare that, that's perfectly fine. That is only where white women and their husband may want to declare that she owns 51%. So both of you showing, you know, John and Mary or whomever, that's perfectly fine, as long as both persons. And then you do have to provide a copy of their ID, whether it is a license, a picture ID, preferably a government issued ID. There's another question. Oh, she said she understands. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Copies of an organizational document, if applicable. Sometimes there are partnership agreements that exist, so we'd like to see a copy of that organizational agreement. Copies of any other reciprocal certifications. If you currently have an SCDO, um, SCDOT certification, we will accept that along with completing our application and providing these forms, it will just move you to the head of the line. The SOSMBA is the Office, the office of Minority Business Affairs, which is the governmental office of the governor's office of small business and minority affairs. And then you have SMBCC, which is the South Carolina Small Minority Business Contracting and Certification uh, Certificates that some may have, as well as any other national certifications. And if you are an out of state company wanting to be certified with the city of Charleston, you will have to have one of these or your own state certification in the state where you're coming from. Because one of the things is this, we don't want you to come all the way from Georgia and get certified in South Carolina when you aren't even certified in your own state because we wanna make sure that the people who live and work here have the best opportunity to be able to compete and being able to be, be able to um, get certified here in the city of Charleston, okay? And so again, these are copies of what the documents might look like. Here's your K-1 form, which is a 1065. Your 1040, which is a Schedule C, which shows your profit and business losses. And then we also have your M1 or M2, which is the reconciliation of income and losses. And that will also show what the percentage of shares of ownership or your K2 or K1 forms. And these are the documents that we use in order to help solidify and verify that you are who you are. We don't just use surnames or their lack of. Charlie, you wanna share anything there? No, I think, I think you, you covered it really well. Um, more than anything, todo el mundo tiene que tener estos documentos, um, los, los impuestos federales, la licencia comercial, um, los contratos, um, copias de los documentos organizativos, si los tienen, y cualquier otra uh, compañía del Estado que te ha dado certificación es capaz de esto, esto, esto te puede ayudar también. Entonces, si tienen estos documentos, es importante incluirlos en el paquete. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We're almost to the end of the application. Now, once you gather all those documents, because this is a self-certification, you will have to have the app, you have to have your application notarized. And will full disclosure and signature. It says, I certify that the above information that you submitted is true and correct that you certify that the applicant owns at least 51% of the name business and control the management of the business, that you certify that your business meets all the requirements 
as required by the city of Charleston's Office of Women, Owned, Women Minority Owned Business Enterprise as specified by the de definition of a MBE or a WBE, which is minority owned or women owned on this form. You will print your name, sign your name, date it, and then have it notarized. If you don't know a notary, typically your, a notary can be found at your local bank. And then you can have it mailed directly to the address listed on the application, which is to the city of Charleston, to George Street Suite 3600, Charleston 29401. Or you can email it there to jordanr at charleston-sc.gov. And there are also notaries at the local library. Any questions before we leave the application? Now, I know it seemed like a lot, but the more you look at the application and it's very simple and we are available to help you do it. And Charlie O'Brien over at LDC has volunteered to help you complete your certification application and his contact information will be made available at the end of this presentation. Charlie, you want to share anything about what LDC is willing to do to help us yeah, in this I'd process? Be, I'd be um, glad to help anybody that needs help with the application. Estoy feliz para ayudar a cualquiera que necesita ayuda con hacer la aplicación. I would also add that we do have two notaries on staff and we would be glad to do that as well, but I would really appreciate someone making an appointment for that just to make sure that we have the proper people there. También tenemos notarios allá y podemos um, ayudar con esa parte también, pero por favor hagan una cita para, para esa parte. Okay. Thank you. And mm -hmm. someone needs to see the link again to the city of Charleston's MWBE office where they need to mail that. So it's Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N-R, like in Ruth, at charleston-sc.gov. And so you're asking yourself, how long does this process take? Well, unlike SCDOT, our application process with, for new applicants typically will take 30 to 45 days to process. Once approved, your business will be added to the MWBE database and you will receive a copy of your certificate. And this is what your certificate will look like. The certificate will have your business name on it. It will state that you have met all of the requirements to be certified and with the city of Charleston and you're in good standing, and it will have a two-year expiration, the start date of your certification and the expiration date, along with your certification number. So the first time you get certified with the city of Charleston, it will be for two years. Anytime you are competing or bidding on a job, you want to make sure you keep a copy of your certification and include it in your bid packet. And you ask the question, why include it? We're going to talk about one of the other benefits and what we do here at the city of Charleston. And then once you've been certified for two years, then you will resubmit recertification and then you will be certified for five years, okay? Like we said earlier, you will be added to the database. In front of you, you have the type of company, concrete or construction management or consulting services. It will list all of the names of those who are in the database. It will also have our 
product or service codes. And then you, we talked about these next codes, your primary and your secondary. And then it will have your business address by city, state, and zip code. And then it will also have a brief description of what your business does. This is where I want to tell you to be clear. If you are a licensed construction company, you want to be able to say that, that that's what I do, whatever your primary work is. Now, I have some people that come to the office and says, well, I'm a bricklayer, I'm a baker, I'm, you know, I, I, I paint, um, and I'm a brain surgeon. Well, we need to know what is it your primary service of work. And that's why the next code and a description of what you do is important. Because when businesses are looking to do business with women minority owned firms, they come to this list. This list is used internally as well as externally, whether it is with the county or with the state or, or other private businesses, they come to our list. Next. And then also one of the benefits of being certified with the city of Charleston, not only do you get your certificate, but then you also get an opportunity to be recognized as one of our business monthly business spotlights. This provides free marketing for those businesses who are registered with the city of Charleston. This is free. It goes on our website it, uh, and all of our social media posts, our newsletter, and then annually at the end of the year, it goes before city council and we bring all of our monthly business spotlight to city council and we recognize all of them for the 12 months. And hopefully next year, we'll do our business breakfast with the mayor. And this is on the website that you can nominate your business for the monthly business spotlight. Don't be shy to nominate yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to pat you on your back. One of the things, and this, and again, this is the website there which is again, city of Charleston's sc.gov, MWBE, and all of that's listed under our business resource page. Don't be afraid to nominate yourself. One of the other things that is very important to know, it is the city's goals that for every tax dollar that we spend, Every contract that we issue, whether it's in construction, services, or supplies, that it is the goal and mandated by our city ordinance that 20% of all construction contracts should go towards qualified women and minority owned businesses. 20% of all services should go towards qualified women and minority owned businesses and 12% in supplies. And so whether or not you are competing, uh, if it's a $100,000 contract, what's 20%? $20,000 of that contract should go towards qualified women minority owned businesses. And so one of the things that I oftentimes tell people is this, whether it's federal, state, or local, you want to make sure that you are making yourself most qualified to be able to compete. In the city of Charleston, we have what we call bid line, where there is a list of all upcoming projects or services or supply that the procurement uh, office is looking to let there is housing, there's stonewater management and capital projects. Those are the huge 
projects that's being done. And in procurement, it could be anything from paper to consulting services, accounting services, to debris cleanup, um, building buildings, stormwater management. What can I say about stormwater? We live on the East Coast. On the Southeast Coast, there is a billion dollars in stormwater. If you know anything about stormwater or construction projects in and around stormwater, you need to be tapping into stormwater management and, and those contracts. Capital projects is when we are building buildings or tearing down buildings or renovations, all go through the city of Charleston's capital projects. If you see a upcoming bid or a invitation for request for proposals, you're gonna also see what we call a pre-bid meeting. I would encourage you all to attend those pre-bid meetings because that's where you're gonna meet the project managers, that's where you're gonna meet the procurement officer and the capital projects directors most times, and they're gonna be able to connect your face and your business to these types of uh, projects that they may be looking to award contracts for. So they're federal, they're state, and they're local municipals that are looking for women and minority owned businesses to do business with. Now on the federal side, SBA, they actually have what we call set asides. Under the 8A program, they have set aside contracts dedicated for its women minority owned firms. The state also have contracts and they also will certify you under the SCD of the SCDOT. And then the local other local municipalities. So once somebody said, well, you know, if I'm certified in the city of Charleston, do I have to get certified with the city of Charlotte or the city of Columbia? Well, each municipality have its own certification program. However, they will accept them because they're reciprocal. So if you're doing something with the airport, the airport accepts our certification. The state port authority, we just recently had a conversation with them. They're looking for women minority owned businesses and they will accept our certification. Santi Cooper, looking for women minority owned um, contractors and businesses, they will accept our certification. So a lot of businesses accept local municipal certifications because they have goals that they must meet, diversity and inclusion. Okay. And these are, again, different types of certification outside of the city of Charleston. VA has a veteran owned business certification. I basically talked about MWBEs, which was today, which is the MWBE certification. And then the federal certification is done through SBA. And that is where they have the set asides with federal contracting. And then we talked about SCDOT, which is the state certification, which deals with a whole lot of highways and bridges. Um, projects, and then the SMVCC, which is the South Carolina Minority Business Certification and Contracts. And then the county, which is very important, the county accepts certification if you've been in business for at least one year. The county also has some set aside contracts where anything under $25,000 will go towards small business enterprise contractors and enable small businesses to compete in the county procurement system. And all of that's found on the Charleston County's uh, Department of SB, uh, well, Office of Business Opportunity is what their office is called. And, they, and their whole goal is to maximize exposure to the public procurement system they also provide access to training network and um, development opportunities. 
And then they also provide technical and financial referrals. Now their criteria is the same as ours, is that you cannot exceed $7.5 million. And then your personal network can't be more than 1.32 million. And again, must be managed and controlled on a day-to-day -day basis by its owners, similar to what we have in the city of Charleston. So not only are we in the business of certification, but we also provide free training and free networking opportunities. We just recently received a $100,000 grant, which is dedicated towards business development. It is our goal to help you become the best and develop and scale your business. When we surveyed multiple companies after the pandemic, we found that it was, re it was recorded and it was known that a lot of people felt that they did not have access to getting any loans through the PPP or their local banks because they weren't financially or lender ready. And so that's why we have Charlie here with LDC. And we also provide free financial training as well as free legal training that we're gonna be talking about our next free webinar. Next page. Q&A. So maybe there's some questions that you all would like to ask at this time, and we're going to make the announcement for our next upcoming webinar. And Charlie's going to tell you about LDC right after our Q&A. Any questions that we haven't answered? So it says, remember to use the Q&A box to ask questions. So if you put something in the chat, we, you know, but if you put it in the q and it'll be great. I, I've been checking in the chat. I think we've been answering questions as we go along. Okay. Um, so I don't think we have anything at this moment. Uh, Miss, Miss Linda is waiting for Charlie <laughs> to, to talk a little bit. You okay. can um, put questions in Spanish into the Q&A. I will give those to Charlie to answer. So if you're more comfortable that way, that, that works as well. Um, but maybe while people are formulating some questions, let's go ahead and announce our next webinar. Okay, our next webinar is going to be July the 21st at 12 p.m. It's gonna be a lunch and learn. It's gonna be an overview of legal basics, basis, basics for small businesses presented by attorney Scott Anthony. Uh, you're going to learn how to set up your business structure, whether you're going to be an LLC or INC or S Corp, the importance of bylaws and operating agreements, business licenses, HR challenges, 1099 versus employees, and business taxes. Who's responsible for that? And so that's going to be a free webinar, July 21st at 12 p.m., and the link was just posted there to help small businesses better prepare so that you can be lender ready, making sure that your business is structured correctly and in accordance with the, the federal standards, as well as to be able to operate efficiently in terms of bylaws or operating agreements. All right, Charlie, yeah. tell a little bit about LDC. Well, one of the things I wanted to say first, though, Ruth, is that working at LDC as a business advisor, I see it all the time where people that go to the effort of becoming certified, it's life changing for their businesses. He visto muchas veces que cuando gente viene a, a, y hace la certificación puede cambiar muy, muchísimo la, la compañía. Uh, pueden hacer muchas ganancias que anteriormente no podían hacer. At LDC, we make loans to people that can't get, or small businesses or, or entrepreneurs 
that have been turned away by banks. So they don't have to go to predatory uh, lenders. Hacemos préstamos para empresas pequeñas cuando no pueden ir a un banco o han sido rechazadas por un banco. We also help after the loan. So we'll help you with your social media, marketing, or, what, or QuickBooks. Podemos ayudarlos después de, um, de que tengan el préstamo, los podemos ayudar después también. Eso es una cosa que hace una diferencia con viniendo al LDC. I saw a question come up, Meg. Yes, from Lord Estes. I'm, lo I'm looking forward to you reading it to me. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I will defer to you, Charlie, on that. <laughs> <laughs> So I look at, it. can I bring it up or? Uh, so it, it's just in the chat box. So if you scroll up a little bit, you okay. should be able to okay. see right above where I put in the link for the LDC website. Yeah, I got it. Uh, they wanna know if you can get help completely in Spanish. Um, in the LDC, tenemos tres miembros que hablan español y uno que habla portugués. Um, no tenemos, Um, prestamista que habla español, pero yo completamente podría ayudarte en español uh, por el proceso uh, completo. No hay, no hay problema con eso. Desde el principio hasta el final y después también. So we are uh, fully capable. We have three Spanish speakers on staff as well as a Portuguese speaker. So we would be very capable of helping somebody in Spanish all the way through. De nada. <laughs> Okay, so gracias to everyone. I want to say thank you for tuning in today to Why Be Certified. It gives you a license to be able to hunt for business. It will help you scale your business to the next level. And so if you get this certification, I promise you it will scale your business and help grow your business exponentially. And so we're here with the city of Charleston to help you be the best and the most that you can be with being certified with the city of Charleston's Office of Women and Minority Businesses. Gracias and thank you. And Charlie, you can take us out. Oh, oh. Christina has one more thing. <laughs> yes, okay. sorry. We have um, also Mike Wack raised his hand. I think I can allow him to share yes. a comment real quick. Okay. All right, Mike, can you hear us? Yes, can you oh. hear me? Yes. Okay. Great, yes, so just at the start of the webinar, I got a text from Mayor Tecklenburg. He says to tell everyone, hello. <laughs> so, <laughs> hello. I'm sure he said hola. Hola. No, he said hello, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remind him next time. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So again, this was in conjunction with the mayor's office of um, the mayor's office of Latinx committee. Latinx and I want advisory to, council. <laughs> advisory council. And I want to thank them for being instrumental in putting this on. So Nelsey. Nelsie, are you on the call? Oh, she is. And do you want to say anything to the entire group? Here. Nelsie? Hola a todos. Eh, oh. We can hear you. My, okay. Eh, solo les quería dar las gracias a todos por participar. Es muy importante que hagamos esta registración para nuestros negocios y que por favor eh, nos cuenten cuáles son sus preguntas. Eh, ya voy a anotar mi teléfono si tienen alguna pregunta en, el, en el, um, la Asociación de Negocios. Estamos siempre listos para ayudarlos. Y por supuesto, en el Comité de Latinx de la Oficina del Alcalde de Charleston. Thank you so much, everybody, for helping to put this, and we appreciate your support. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And Charlie, take us out. Gracias a todos. And again, thank you, Christina, Meg, and everyone. And know that we are here and our contact information is listed on the screen. Feel free to give us a call. 
and we'll be more than happy to walk you through our application process. So again, gracias and thank you to everyone. And you will be uh, receiving the copy of the PowerPoint so you can look through the slides if you had any questions. I can also share the recording from tonight and you'll be getting a brief survey to take after the webinar. If you could please try to take that, that will help us with our future webinar plans. All right, thank you.